Well, good day. This is retired fire chief Paul Smith with the Marin Fire History Group. And today we again have the pleasure of uh, bringing up Mark Brown to us today. And Mark is the executive director with the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority. And uh, good, good afternoon, Mark. Good afternoon, Paul. Great to see you again. Well, thanks. Uh, we'd love to have you on. And, and um, we're gonna, we'd like to talk a little bit about today um, you know, the progress we're making in vegetation management in, in the spring of uh, 2020. And perhaps you can talk a little bit about uh, recent incidences. Yeah, uh, I really do think that we're having quite a bit of success, not just with the work that the MWPA and our member agencies are doing, but also the work that our residents and the increased uh, awareness um, and the desire to get the work done amongst our residents. And two nights ago, we had a fire in a eucalyptus grove in San Rafael above Dominican. Uh, it forced some evacuations of some homes above the fire because of the intensity it was burning within the eucalyptus grove. In fact, um, there was some spotting that, that occurred outside of the eucalyptus grove and got into the grass and started to move towards homes. And fortunately, it moved towards homes where some residents did some fantastic defensible space work on their own. And it, it all but stopped the fire's forward progress and allowed the firefighters to get in, suppress that fire without any impacts to the homes. And that was all resident driven defensible space work. Wow. Wow. That's, 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 that's great news. I know um, the Black Canyon neighborhood has a defensible space group, correct? Correct. Yeah. And, and it really goes along with our mantra that the strength of our communities is some of its parts. And so if everybody's doing their part, then the rest of the community becomes that much safer. And, 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 and we've shown time and time again that as a fire approaches structures, if we can keep that first structure or two or more from igniting, then we decrease the chances of it spreading to other structures. Sure. Sure. That's yeah, absolutely. You keep it within the confines and you know, keep the fire small and hit it quick. And yeah, you're absolutely right. The less fuel there is to, um, increase the intensity of that fire, the greater chances the, the, the home has of uh, surviving the fire and the greater chances the firefighters have of, of defending that place as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and also um, our defensible space program across our 17 member agencies has really picked up a lot of momentum. Okay. Uh, we're, um, we had close to 40,000 inspections last year. We anticipate more inspections this year. And we've also increased our grant funding for um, following a defensible space inspection, uh, $1,000 for defensible space work and $5,000 for matching uh, as a matching grant for home hardening. Although some of our home hardening items do not require a match. Um, new vents, gutters or gutter covers, and then the steel that goes underneath the garage door mm -hmm. and a battery backup for the garage door do not require a match. Okay, so so um, this is part of the um, the efforts you guys are making at um, Marin Wild Fire Prevention Authority. Now, how would our viewers uh, access those funds? If they haven't already been inspected by one of our inspectors, they can go to our uh, website, marinwildfire.org, click on the resident info tab okay. and then hit um, grant program. Okay. And it'll allow you to request an inspection so that you can get the inspection. And then the grant program is based on the findings of the inspection. Okay. So when the inspector comes to my house um, and they give me the form to say, Hey, these are our recommendations. Is that one way of the homeowner knowing of a couple of um, their home hardening or vegetation management um, uh, preparations they may anticipate so, and potentially could get grant money for. Exactly. So they'll get um, a card that has a unique six, six digit ID. Okay. And then you'll go back to the our website, enter your address. It'll ask for the six digit ID and then you'll get a, a full report that okay. lists all the items, good and um, imp improvement needed at your residence. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of that report, it'll list the specific items that are available for grant funding. Okay. And then you click, I would like to apply for a grant and all the data from the report automatically transfers over to the grant program. 
And then you fill out a couple more pieces of information and you submit your grant request. All right. All right. Now, how much funding is available for um, um, residences that, that are located within the authority? We have over $600,000 set aside for next fiscal year. Oh, cool. That's great. Yeah, that goes a long ways um, from the olden days when we'd uh, apply to Fire Safe Marin for a chipper day, Mark, I'll tell you. <laughs> And, you know, and we're putting $1.2 million a year towards chipper days. Oh, oh, see, that's, I, I, I think, you know, back 15 or 20 years ago, I, I don't know if there was $20,000 in the pot. Yeah, you know, so, so our chipper day program has yeah. grown um, dramatically. It is hitting every community that's within our 17 member agencies. Uh, you should get notification when uh, chapter days are going to be in your community. You can, and it's usually relate um, in conjunction with our inspections. So that we're trying to set up the timing that you receive an inspection, get motivated to do the work. And then, oh, by the way, we have a way for you to remove that material. And on average, people are paying about $200 a year for the MWPA measure C. Mm -hmm. Well, to be able to remove that material, if you're going to pay someone, it's going to cost more than $200. So we see that as a really effective return on your investment as a taxpayer. Oh, got it. So, so currently the chipper days, um, by, by the, the resident being in the, in the, uh, member authority group, um, that's, that's picked up for that's that, that resident have, doesn't have to pay for the chipper. Yes. And, and so the, again, the best way to do is go to marinewildfire.org, click on resident info, and okay. then there's chipper days, and that'll right. bring you to the site where you can get more information. Great. Well, is there anything else we want to touch base with today, Mark, on your agenda that you know you think is important to get out there to our viewers? Real quick, I'd like to mention our continued evacuation route clearing um, process and work. Okay. Because, I mean, it's a fact of life that during a large evacuation, there are going to be traffic jams. It is just not avoidable. These roads are not designed to have every resident hit the street at the same time and get out. And we really want residents to stay in their vehicle. We don't want them to feel like they get out, they need to get on their feet and evacuate on feet on foot because they're so much safer in a car. So our goal with our evacuation route clearing is that even under fire conditions, a resident or an evacuee will be safe within their vehicle. And then I wanna highlight um, a, an upcoming project actually very soon and that's the greater ross valley shaded fuel break uh, for this current fiscal year that was the scoping and the compliance to, to de design the project and it's going to be a 38 mile long shaded fuel break along the wildland urban interface boundary in the ross valley it'll range between 200 feet and 300 feet in width the whole design is to provide access to the firefighters behind the homes. Mm -hmm. It'll decrease the rate of spread, decrease the spotting potential, decrease um, the intensities. It'll allow residents more time to evacuate and it'll allow firefighters more time to get in and actually be able to take successful suppression actions. Um, and we're going to start work on that in August. And then the wow. other areas of the MWPA are following that model that was created by the Ross Valley Shaded Fuel Break to implement similar projects in all of our areas. So we'll be looking at a network of shaded fuel breaks along the Wooey boundary throughout all of our communities in Marin. Wow, that's unbelievable. That's a, that's a tremendous amount of work. So well, I think what you're saying here is the first project goes from Fairfax all the way to Larkspur? Uh, yeah, it's gonna start on the east side of 101 in Corte Madera and go wow. all the way up through Fairfax and then wrap around Sleepy Hollow and back towards the Terra Linda Divide. And then San Rafael Fire, um, as part of the MWPA, will be going along Ridgewood and continuing it through there. Right, right. And then similar efforts um, next year, the year after in Southern Marin, I would think. Southern Marin has been using other funding for uh, shaded fuel breaks along the Wooey boundary, and they will be using more of the MWPA funding as well. So that's been ongoing. And then Novato is planning shaded fuel breaks all around all through their Wooey boundaries as well. Wow, that's that's fantastic. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's great news for us here that that like like myself that live in the Wooey, <laughs> and and you know uh, all of us here at uh, Marin Fire History uh, appreciate the work you're doing, and we look back in the the days when we were you know on the engine and compared to now, and you guys are making great leaps and bounds. So 
Now, thanks for that, Mark, and thanks for joining us today at Marin Fire History Group. Have a great day, guys.